Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Today we're going to be talking about structs, how to create them, what they are, and a little bit about memory management in regards to structs. So let's start off with, you know, what are structs? Structs are basically a way to contain data in Unreal Engine. Um, from a high level perspective, they are just that. They are basically just a data container. There's a lot of different things that are structs within the engine that you may not even realize are structs. For example, gameplay tags are basically an F name wrapped in a struct that give you some extra functionality. Now with that, um, there's actually a lot you can do with structs inside of C++. Now inside of Unreal Engine, you may be aware of blueprint structs. And the big way that they are different is that with C++ structs, there is just a lot more functionality built in uh, and things that you can do with metadata and things like that, different ways you can expose that um, to the blueprint side. Um, they're just really super handy ways to um, interact with structs and they tend to be a little bit more um, overall less likely to break. Uh, and they are also very great in terms of a C++ struct can be used in blueprint but a blueprint struct cannot be used in C++. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, first just jump into creating a struct. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna right click in your project, as long as you already have C++ set up. If not, go ahead and check out earlier videos in the series to get C++ set up. Um, but what you wanna do is go ahead and select none. Now, of course, if you go in here, you can type in struct and look at a few different options here, but a lot of these you're going to notice aren't necessarily what you're looking for. There's a lot of different things that use either structs or are struct similar, um, but we're not going to worry about that for today. We're just going to hit none. And we'll go ahead and call this our um, quest objectives. These will be something we can track uh, a quest with. Now you can, of course, name this whatever you want. What I'm creating here is not specifically for quest objectives, I'm creating more of a generic class so we can contain multiple structs within here, um, but I'm just giving it a name because I'm probably gonna use this to contain a lot of different quest things. Hey guys, it's Editing Space Marine here to remind you to hit subscribe for my next deep dive into Unreal Engine. All right, uh, once that's done and built, let's go ahead and close the editor because of course we don't want the editor open room while we're tweaking a bunch of stuff. Um, and then what we're going to want to go ahead and do is um, hit reload all. And we're basically going to want to ignore, um, let me I'll go ahead and close this for some reason, opened all that. Now what we're going to want to do is, you know, kind of ignore most of this stuff because um, we don't really care about our um, actual class here. This is mostly just a holder um, to store our actual structs here. Um, technically, you could go in and create the file manually. I like to just have some kind of class or something tied to it um, just to make it just that little bit easier to um, track and keep things organized. Now, let's go ahead and what you want to do is part of the reflection system is um, with these use structs, you get a lot of options for what you can put in here. Now, of course, you can do the tried and true um, blueprint type, which we're going to want to do here since we're um, actually creating a blueprint type here, uh, or blueprint struct here. I'll call this a struct. Uh, we'll say this is going to be our F objective details. And within this, you know, we're going to want to have our um, stuff like, oh, one second, let me pull up my docs here. So we're going to want to have a couple of things, you know, we're going to have all of these different use struct things um, and, and the metadata and stuff is all really cool. But I think the big thing we're going to want to focus on is because uh, you can see here, there's a lot of different options, right? Uh, for example, you can stop it from being able to split pin. Um, that's useful for certain things. And for example, in the engine, they actually use this um, for gameplay tags so that you don't actually open up that struct. Um, but yeah, um, any of it has native break. That's basically a way to define certain functions and things as the default break. So 
when you pull off the pin, you can say break this this way, rather than just having it send out all of the variables. Um, you may want specific ones to return um, depending on you know what data you want the, the end user to have access to. Um, but I think for now, we're actually going to um, grab a short tooltip here. And we're going to give this struct, um, yeah, a go up here. We're going to give this a short tooltip, and we're just going to um, say this struct contains objective details, or I guess details about an objective. Details about and objective all right let's save all of these and all right now let's go ahead and give it a little bit of details so to actually get a struct working first thing you're going to want to do is have a oh i forgot you got to do it all copy cop all capitalized um do we need a generated body and then we're going to give it a U property. Um, we'll say edit, edit anywhere. Uh, blueprint read right, and we'll give it a F vector of objective. Look, uh, objective end location. You may want, you know, a start location, end location, things like that. Um, and for this one, we're going to just start very simple because we're going to talk about data and memory usage and things like that here in a little bit. Uh, so we'll start with that and we'll have F objective details. And do this, and we'll just throw in that objective uh, and location here. We'll just copy that and paste it here. And we'll say that's just equal to an f vector 0, 0, 0. All right, let's hit save. Now, for some reason, um, sometimes VS Studio likes to bug out a little bit. Um, and not display things here. Yeah, we'll say like it's undefined of things, but let's go ahead and try to do a um, rebuild here. Sometimes that will actually fix the problem in and of itself. All right, uh, from here, once you've gone ahead and, um, but the build failed because of course um, the dot generated files hadn't been created yet. You can either manually include them and then build um, or I believe the way it's supposed to work is just the next time you build the editor, um, it'll automatically add it there. Um, but sometimes I've noticed that can be weird where it won't show up. Um, you can just add that manually if you so choose. But uh, at the end of the day, we should now have this inside of Blueprint. So let's go ahead and just open up a random Blueprint here. And we're going to look for our F objective. Objective, sorry. Uh, should be, yeah, just under objective details because the F gets trimmed out. And we'll just call this uh, current objective for no reason other than just to have this here to look at. Um, but yeah, so you can see here we have that F vector, objective and location. We can pull this out and we can do, uh, or is it break? and get that vector, or we can split this pin, I believe, because we did not set it to not allow. Yep, so you can see here, current objective, objective, and location, either way. Um, but yeah, so that's the absolute most basic way to get a struct into Unreal Engine. Now let's actually talk a little bit more in detail about um, the different options you have here now that you have this. So you've got a couple of things here. First, we're gonna talk about um, within our um, struct, we've got 
you know, all these options, right, where you can set different things, you can make certain things, you know, meta tool tips, um, no export, things like that. You've also got still, once again, for every single variable or function within here, um, these U properties as well. Um, U struct here, as well as some options, you know, that we've set in these. Now, let's say you had a function, maybe that you wanted to do something within your U struct, um, but you don't necessarily want people to be able to directly access it. Um, so what we can do is create a private member function. Uh, now these cannot be exposed to blueprints, um, but you can actually call them from um, other places, other classes. Uh, if you've got a blueprint function library, um, as we do, um, you can set those up. But for now, let's go ahead and um, just create one of these just to kind of show what that would look like. So um, let's say we wanted to maybe um, set the um, F objective location. Uh, we can do, uh, we'll say void set objective and location. Now normally getters and setters you want to have if you want the uh, structure itself to be private. Um, let's do this. Um, now normally we don't want to do too much with these private member functions. Um, mostly they you know they want them to be pure and things like that but honestly there's there's a decent amount you can do. Um, but usually, you know, if, if I'm going to be going through all this effort, I'm probably just going to be um, accessing it directly rather than locking it, hit, hiding it away. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, from here, this is going to, we'll say, this is going to take in an F vector. Um, vector and we'll call this uh, new location. And we will... Um, set objective end location equal to new location. Oops, of course, yes, studio does not like to do that. All right, I'm sorry about that. You had to remove the const. Uh, my brain was uh, frying there for a second, uh, but yeah. So you can go ahead and do that. And then if you've got a blueprint function library or something, what you'd wanna do is uh, basically have a function that uh, will grab an instance of the struct and then um, call that specific uh, function from within that, uh, since you can't expose it directly to blueprint. But let's go ahead and talk now about memory management. Uh, memory management is quite complex when it comes to structs. Um, but it's actually not quite as difficult as it seems at first glance. If you go ahead and hover over the struct here, you can see we have a size 24, alignment 8 bytes. And what this essentially is, is there is a lot of different things you can have within a um, structure. Let's go ahead and actually duplicate um, these a few times. So we're going to have a couple of different things here. So we're going to have a pool and... Oh, and we're gonna have a uh, f name maybe, um, or sorry, we're gonna do f string, um, and we'll just call these um, slightly different names: completed and display name, or something like that. Um, but as you can see, each one of these is slightly different size. So sixteen with an alignment of eight. Um, yep, hovering is failing for a bool. Um, I guess technically is, there's not an F bool, right? Yeah, no, I'm not. I thought I was crazy for a second. Uh, um, but a bool is, is, you know, insanely small because it's basically, um, if I can pull it up here. So I'm pulling up all my stuff here. Basically a single, uh, bit. Uh, true or false, uh, sorry, a single byte. Um, but yeah, um, so when you have these uh, 48 bytes, as you can see here, um, depending on the compiler and things like that, there's a lot of different stuff that can determine, you know, the memory layout. Um, but currently, at least as far as I'm aware, the way it works in Unreal Engine is 
Um, depending on the actual information you have uh, inside of a struct, it'll lay things out a certain way. Now, of course, this won't necessarily matter if you're going to have a single instance of a struct, hell, even, you know, maybe a couple of instances of a struct. Um, but when you start to get, you know, lots of them, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, um, this adds up a lot. Um, now, as you can see here, this is an example, not my own. Uh, it's from a gentleman uh, by the name of Yoan Rock. Uh, he posted this having a bit of a discussion about structs and struct memory management. So I wanted to show it off to kind of talk about, you know, on the bottom, this is an ideal memory layout. This is, you know, you've got everything segmented off. Um, these sizes are not necessarily to scale um, based on the memory size, but just as an example, you know, let's assume these are. And then you've got your bool here. Now, if you have them just in a random order, say the bool is first, bools can't take up a full block. And so therefore there's padding at the end. Now, ideally what you wanna have is all of your padding at the end because what can fit within this block will fit within that block if it is available. Um, so if I go ahead and bring this over, you know, a single bool, it's not that big a deal, but if you add a second bool, as you can see here, in the bad form, you've suddenly now added a secondary padding because it goes, okay, I need to add this to the first one. Okay, now I need to give this this whole new block, whole new block, whole new block, whole new block. Oh, here's a new bool. I need to give this here and give this some padding. But if you have these ordered in a correct way where you're taking up less memory space, you'll see here that you've got your blocks first and then this, and then this fills in that padding section. Um, and one thing you can do is within Unreal Engine, um, you can actually see the memory layout. Now, it's not always so clear exactly what's happening, but as you can see here, we've got these, uh, these effectors taking up these full blocks, and they've got this bool by itself, and then the display name. But what happens if we go in here and say, um, add a, another bool? Let's add a bool here, and we'll call this just you know completed two, and then we'll add a bool down here. We'll call this completed three. Let's go ahead and save that and close this and relook at what that looks like, because we should see an update. So as you can see here these objectives still take up the same amount of space, but because these bools are separated, they could be taking up less memory space. But in fact, they're taking up more now. And in fact, they could get even worse if let's say we go ahead and grab this bool here and let's move it to the front. Um, and let's just hit enter, clean up the spacing here. Let's go ahead and close this and reopen that memory layout. And boom, look at how awful that is. Now, if we actually look at our memory size here, you know, size is 64 bytes. Let's see what happens if we go ahead and condense these down. And we'll hit save. I don't have a formatting thing, so it won't clean it up. But you said, see, 48 bytes. Suddenly, we're taking up less memory. It's the exact same amount of variables, but we've condensed them down so that they fit within the eight the, the eight byte blocks. Um, and that is where your biggest benefit's gonna be of structuring these in a really well thought out way. Um, but yeah, so that's a lot of stuff to chew on, um, but that is essentially the gist of structs and memory management with structs. There's more to them. Um, of course, with anything, there's always more to every Thing in Unreal Engine. Uh, but that's all we have the time for today. Um, if you like this content, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. But otherwise, good luck and good hunting.